Pokemon is an absolute behemoth of a franchise. I bet you old Jeffy's even a little jealous of their success. Help me, Leon! And this series has been one of my favorites of all time. It is the biggest media franchise in history. And they don't even have their own theme park. And for most of my life, I have been absolutely obsessed with these little baldings. Then I was absolutely indoctrinated into the Pokemon cult. They're demons. From the games, to the cards, to the anime, to the merchandise. By the time I turned 18, I was absolutely poked out. And today, I want to take a little time to express in a video my journey through the series that's put me on a roller coaster of emotions. From loving, to hating, to being just absolutely damn right confused Bruh. by these games. Since this is a franchise that's been with me my entire life, and it has affected me in basically every single way possible, for better or for worse. Also, if I continue making games and reviews for other games, or even Pokemon on YouTube in general, I think this is a pretty critical video to make. I believe there's always a little subjectivity in any review or opinion, really, and if you keep watching my videos, you're gonna have questions like, Why doesn't this guy know? Or why hasn't he been playing hardcore RPGs for the past 30 years? Well, the answer is most likely because for the first 18 years of my life, I was absolutely consumed by these little Pokemon. And now, anytime I try out a new game, or even an old one, I missed out from my Poke-filled childhood. There's just a lot I don't get about some games. Like playing Baldur's Gate 3 was an absolute treat for me, but mostly because it was my first foray into this genre and an absolutely stellar game. So without further ado, I will be walking through the entire series and trying to come to terms with my feelings about Pokemon as a franchise in 2023. And I don't know, I think this might be pretty relatable for a lot of people around my age. And if you feel that way, then please like and subscribe. Also, I will be making a separate video where I will just be ranking a tier list for all the Pokemon games. I've always wanted to do that kind of thing. And it's um, just a fun video that will connect with this one a little bit. Growing up, these little pocket goblins absolutely occupied my thoughts more than anything. School, sports, hygiene, you know, typical Pokemon competitive player shit. I'm a little too young to have grown up with Generation 1 and the first big Pokemania in the late to kind of mid 90s, but nonetheless I was still infected with a Pokebug at the ripe age of 4 due to my crazy cousins. And also because I got my first Game Boy Color. I have memories of playing Pokemon Blue and Silver back in the day which I got right together when I first got that Game Boy Color. But I don't think I ever had the brain capacity to get farther than the first couple of gyms. I was pathetic. I'm surprised my mother even put up with me. But as I got older, Generation 3 came out. And that's what felt like a new beginning for Pokemon and for myself. A whole new world with tons of new Pokemon and not as much connection to the original. Like for real, you can't even connect the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance. Like, what the f Pokemon Ruby became the first Pokemon game I ever beat, and frankly, the first RPG game I ever beat in general. Before that, I was incapable of beating any game that wasn't a simple platformer or some crappy Disney tie-in game. Again, being pathetic is a theme here. I remember being so excited though to finally kick Steven's ass. I swear, at the time, that felt like the biggest accomplishment of my entire life and I learned how to use Velcro in preschool. My friends were cheering me on. It was midnight, we were camping in the backyard, and I could finally fall asleep in peace after weeks of trying to beat him. And it was one of the most important core memories that I have. They just don't make champions like they used to. Back then, they were bred and trained to destroy four-year-olds' hopes and dreams of ever becoming a champion. And after beating Ruby, I continued to play through Sapphire again because, you know, I had to prove that I could do it twice. And finally, I went back and beat Blue and Silver with a lot more confidence and a Game Boy screen light. Fire Red and Leaf Green also came around this time, and yeah, that was good stuff. Now, 
I wouldn't say they were my favorite, but you know, I'm so, I was obsessed with Pokemon, so I was still playing them like crazy. The next really big hype came around the DS era of games. I remember before the launch of Pokemon Diamond, I was checking Serebii.net every single day for the slightest inkling of news on Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. The hype cycle was through the roof, and it's the first game I can really remember waking up every single day, more hype than the last, for the next sweet hit of Pokecrack. The games seem to be shaping up as one of the biggest things of all time for a little 11 year old. And finally, the game came out and it was actually great. I loved that game to death. I played it to death and I did get stuck a couple of times as I was still a dumb kid, but I loved everything about the game. I played it for hours by myself, connecting with friends in the underground, doing some freak shit. Game Freak had really outdone themselves again and it was an absolute knockout hit for me. And looking back, I remember that region very fondly, even though when I try to play them again, it's a little hard. They're still a little slow and I don't know, I don't have, I think I've lost patience as I've gotten older. And after those, it was a pretty consistent trend for me. Heart Gold and Soul Silver were absolutely goaded and the greatest remakes of all time. Black and White had a great story and some of the best sprite work for all of Pokemon and frankly, I think it might have the best artwork in general from the series going on as well. And Black and White 2 were more than just the third game to an actually solid sequel and really expanded the Unova region. And up until about Pokemon X and Y, I would get really hyped for a game, I would devour every piece of content I could before launch, and after launch I'd suck on the teat of Game Freak and play every single thing I could in each game and do all the content. There always seemed to be more to do in each game, and as I got older I started diving more into the mechanics and learning about EVs and IVs and competitive play, and even dabbling in a little bit of ROM hacking, that failed. But whatever, now we're talking about Oras, because Oras came out and that kind of changed things for me. I remember being so hyped to finally play a remake of the game that started it all for me. The first couple hours, yeah, I was having an absolute blast. But that didn't last for too much longer, unfortunately. For every Pokemon game before, I had put it in at least 100, more, usually more, but I had put it in at least 100 hours for everything. But for Oras, after finishing most of the main content and a little bit of the endgame content, I was just burned out. I'd look at my 3DS where usually after school and sports I'd be diving into playing for like one to two hours every single night, and I just wasn't anymore. I found myself going back to Ruby and Sapphire and playing those games that I had a blast playing, but every time I picked up Oras, I just, no, I don't want to. I think it's a great game, but the magic of Pokemon was starting to wane a little bit. And if you know anything about Pokemon or can read a wiki page timeline of releases, you know the next game in the series was Sun and Moon. And there was actually about two-ish years between Oras and Sun and Moon, and in combination with the fact that I was in college now, I honestly couldn't give a fuck about these games. In that two years, I had really branched out and played a lot more games, like Xenoblade and Persona, Final Fantasy. I'd even gotten around to some of the classics like Earthbound and Chrono Trigger, and I had never tried before because I was so obsessed with everything Pokemon and playing those games exclusively. And finally, Sun and Moon come out, and they tried to shake things up a little bit with the formula. You know, I kind of applauded them, and still do, for trying. And I really liked the characters, they were very vibrant characters, and some of the most memorable characters in the entire franchise, especially compared to some of the mess of X and Y previously. But I was definitely in a mood for something more. I was a little cringy and probably said, this is a baby game, like, I don't, I want real Pokemon, what have they done to my precious little pocket demons somewhere on the internet? But also the things they introduced, like Z-moves, just felt boring compared to even Mega Evolutions, and I was just kind of like, not that interested. And as you might expect, when Ultra Sun and Moon came out, I just felt like they were a worse version of the game in my opinion. However, I still finished the game and I had some fun and I, you know, made the game challenging and weird in my own way. But at this point, I was completely done with competitive Pokemon 
or trying any of the more hardcore stuff in the franchise, and I was already getting my ass handed to me by a college engineering degree, so can you blame me? Okay, cracking from the future here. I completely forgot to mention Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, and you know, those are technically the games that came out next, so uh, I think that says a lot though. Um, only thing I can remember enjoying about these games was riding around on the bigger Pokemon, and yeah, that was dope, but other than that, I didn't finish them, and I completely forgot they existed until I looked at all my Pokemon games. Oops. But the real straw hat. <laughs> the real straw that broke the camel's back, though, was Sword and Shield. Look, I know these games have their fans. Some towns are very pretty, and the graphics were, like, not too bad in the more curated areas. And I like a lot of the Pokemon designs. They were really great. But damn, I absolutely dislike these games so much and I never finish them and I never will. But after a couple years have passed and a little reflection on myself, I mean to be honest I can see why I didn't like these games as much. At this point I had played games like Breath of the Wild and Xenoblade 2 and I think they kind of obliterated any hype I could have for this game. Those games promised and delivered these excellent worlds, fun different combat, beautiful character designs, and some amazing stories. Sword and Shield only delivered pain and glitches. I tried several times to complete this game. Even a global pandemic though couldn't get me to play any more of this game, which I think says a lot. After I came to terms with that, I knew Pokemon was just kind of dead to me right now. And other franchises like Fire Emblem, and Xenoblade, and Yakuza had asked it as my favorite series of current games releasing. And you know, it's fine, I thought. We all grow up. I can still get a lot of enjoyment out of playing the old games or trying out ROM hacks as I was still doing that. But hey, these games just aren't for me anymore. I'll collect, play them after a discount. But main takeaway is I had just kind of given up all hope. And then I saw what they did with the Diamond and Pearl remakes, and I went into absolute despair. Don't get me started on these games. It will be an even longer video, and I swear, I just can't do, I can't even think about these games anymore. Like, I already probably lost a year off my life just being mad about the state of these games. So, where does that leave us now? I'm an adult at this point. I have a full 9-to-5 job, and I saw the announcement trailer of Pokemon Arceus Legends. And I remember thinking, okay, I'll wait till release. I can't do this again. But I had to admit, it looked pretty cool. And after a couple of months of watching trailers and just casually getting a little bit hyped, it started to build in me a little bit. And But no, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get too hyped though. And I can't get hurt again. Not again. But finally, the game came out. And yeah, wow, yeah, fun game. Look, it's not the best game of all time in the best state. It's not my favorite. It's a little ugly and buggy at times, but you know, I gotta say, it is a fun game. And I had a lot of great times playing through this game. And I was having fun with Pokemon game again. And I think the big change to the formula is really what did it for me. And the changes to catching Pokemon and exploring the world. Sword and Shield tried that a little bit with the wild area, but it just wasn't enough for my greedy ass. I needed a whole open world game or just nothing at all. And finally, since Sun and Moon came out, I was honestly excited to play a Pokemon game again. Even months later, I have gone back to just catch Pokemon and roam around the world, and the gameplay loop is just absolutely immaculate. And from a casual perspective, which is what I am now, I'm just a casual Pokemon fan. I really enjoyed the shorter battles. I liked the new Pokemon riding mechanics. I loved the new level of immersion that I've just kind of wanted from a Pokemon game, as well as also the boss battles were just kind of an interesting spin on the Pokemon formula that I didn't really expect. And there was also just some quality of life features about the game that I really enjoyed. And yeah, I know there's another game in Scarlet and Violet, which recently released, which I gotta say, I did have fun with regardless of the relentless amounts of jank in those games. But the story and the Pokemon were fun and the formula was still changed up enough that, you know, I was having more fun with the game. Not perfect, not as much as Legends Arceus, but what can you say? 
I was having fun again playing a Pokemon game, and that's what truly matters, right? Given the roller coaster this franchise has put me through, I can't say it will ever be like the good old days. And honestly, I've given up hope that I'll ever be waking up very early in the morning to check the news for any new announcements on Pokemon games, but I'm glad things have somewhat turned around, and at the very least I can hang on to a little bit of hope for the next release. I still consider myself a Pokemon fan, but of the casual variety, and we'll see what the future holds. I have no intention of playing any of the DLCs or Scarlet and Violet or really anything that come out probably once I play the game I'm done. But I don't know. Just Game Freak, don't kill the Legend series, please, I need it. And yeah, that's the end of Pokemon for me right now. It's October 2023. Um, still waiting on what probably comes next for Pokemon, but I have a little bit of hope now. And I hope you enjoyed this video.